So welcome to this experiment. Uh, my name is Jackson from Jackson.com. I do streaming here. And uh, what I am most probably known for is that I am a fighting game commentator. Uh, I commentate a lot of tournaments for Salty EU, for Wanted or at Damascus Place. I have also been on Saltmine League with Retus who runs great stuff. And that means I deal with a lot of audio stuff. I have a setup here to communicate my noises to TOs who are running these streams. And it could be simple. It could just be microphone into a thing, but I'm not just a <laughs> fighting commentator. I have a lot of experience with a bunch of different stuff. Um, most recently in music, uh, I have a bunch of audio equipment because I do musical stuff. I like recording music and creating music. And I have a deep appreciation for the art of music. But I also have experience in theater, uh, doing very like small amounts. And especially the thing I'm very good at and have lots of experience in is rhetoric and holding speeches in front of people, which comes from teaching and other stuff. And... That has led to me having a lot of experience with doing noise, making sound in a good and pleasant way. Um, and there's a lot of stuff to do here. And that's why we are going to be doing it like this. That's the wrong scene. Good. See, this is not, this is doing good audio. This is not doing good streaming. That, that's another lecture that I'm going to need to watch. So we will have this thing in a few parts. So one, how to do good audio question mark. Who am I? We just covered that. What is my outlook? Like, where is my experience coming from? What is the goal here? And then the lecture. That will consist of three parts because in all audio chains, there are three parts to it. We have one, the most obvious one. Um, that will actually be point number two. The microphone. That thing right there kind of important um three signal processing what do i do with the electricity that comes out of there we will cover some of that here this can be in parentheses hardware and this can be in parentheses software but we're missing point number one honestly what i think is going to be the most important part of this. Um, and that is the instrument, AKA your voice. So we are going to work out of a few premises. I am going to assume that you are someone who wants to record vocals, either singing or speaking uh, and you want it to sound good uh, you want to record vocals singing or speaking i am also going to work off the assumption that i will be tr i will be Working from the assumption that your body is a tool. Um, your body is a tool. Good. That is. And then that as well. An instrument. So what I mean by that is that your body is what's making noise. Uh, this is going to need a practical example. We're going to go bring it. This right here is an acoustic guitar. 
it consists of multiple parts. Uh, one of them is these strings. When they vibrate, they move this part here called the seat, if I remember correctly. And that whole thing moves this top wooden plate up and down that compresses and decompresses the air inside the sound hole, the sound hole, and that makes noise. That is how this thing works. There is also a back to it to encase the noise, and there's other more complicated things. But this is an instrument, yes, but it works in a very physical way. Your body is the same. However, your body works more like a flute or an organ. Uh, your instrument comprises of three main parts. Uh, and that is... We are actually... We have moved on from my outlook. I think that is it. I think we may add some stuff up here as they come on, but the instrument. Uh, your body as an instrument. Three main parts. So the reason I'm covering this is especially due to my experience being a choir singer. Uh, I'm not a good choir singer, but I definitely sung in choirs. Um, there are three important parts of your body. We have the lungs and the chest that generate air pressure that blows out of your mouth. Then we have the vocal cords that are sitting in the throat that squeeze to change the pitch of uh, that noise. So, ah, uh, that is just my vocal cords tightening and relaxing and then the lips and mouth tongue area that's a very complicated thing but that changes the i would refer to it as timber as because i come from musical background right i can make the exact same thing if i just like make the same tone uh, all of that came just from moving my mouth. Right now, when I am speaking, I am squeezing my lungs to get air out of my throat. I am relaxed in my throat and I am using my mouth, using the lips and the tongue to form the sounds. That, that is why this meat flapping makes sense, right? Um, so three parts. Your lungs, your throat, vocal cords, your mouth. Good. We need to take care of that. Um, so we are going to do a few things here. Uh, one, we are going to have a cover of... Warming up your voice and body. Taking care of your voice and body. Because if you don't keep up with either of those, you are not going to have a very long career. Um, that's a weird thing to have to consider, I assume, at least it is for me, that I'm, I need to take care of my body and my voice in order to keep doing this. But it's true. Um, if you go to concerts, wear earplugs or else you're gonna get ten tinnitus, like, and that sucks. Your body is something you require to do work. And it is in this case as well, if you are a carpenter you know how to lift things you know how to do your work without getting hurt if you are a noise making person ideally you should know how to do the same 
So, we're gonna start with a bit of warm up and caretaking routine. So, I don't know exactly a lot about the throat, but that's more in taking care of. I don't know any specific warm ups for your throat, but we'll take that when it comes. For your lungs, your lungs are <laughs> very fucking key for you to live. It's, you're gonna die. You need to breathe. You are consistently breathing. So, one, a... <laughs> this is going to sound diggish, especially me. I'm fat and out of shape, but... Being in good physical condition is good for your lungs. It requires you to speak longer without having to breathe. Like, it makes it so that you can speak longer without having to breathe. And it... It lets you do things without getting out of breath essentially and let you go for a long time but yeah i can say yeah go running but that's not what i do particularly what i do is that i use my body deliberately so i am going to do a few i guess long warm-ups uh for taking care of that so again this is where my outlook. I am a martial arts <laughs> instructor, musician, and performer. This is just my experience. I have not received any education in this. All of this is self-taught. Trust me at your own risk. Um, I am of course doing my absolute best to only give you good advice that I believe in uh, and that I feel have helped me. But please take it with a grain of salt. Do your own studying. Look stuff like this up if this is something you care about. Uh, because my experience comes from a wealth of sources. This is teachers I have had during like childhood choir stuff, uh, music teachers. This is stuff I've seen on the internet. I'm actually going to link a video here that I really like that is a full physical warm-up uh, an actor a performer voice actor called Jacob Burgess is running on Desert Bus um, a charity fundraiser it's, it's great uh, but he goes through like a 15 minute warm-up and it's very good if you just want to do a physical warm-up now for lungs what I do to take care of them is that I mindfully breathe this is not something I do consistently but this is a part thing i incorporate in my exercise and when i have anxiety when i need to calm down this is something i need to i do and just like whenever i'm sitting i try to be mindful of this and that is breathing correctly and making noise correctly uh but that is actually a more important using the instrument correctly. Good. Now, how do I describe this? So, the, when you make noise on scene, ideally what you want to do is project. So this is my normal speaking voice. This is how Jacob talks when he is speaking normally. But this is my on-stage voice. This is my performing voice. This is how I speak when I want to be heard, when I want my voice to carry. Uh, and the difference is, my normal speaking voice, I'm speaking from the like top of my chest here, just kind of relaxing. When I'm using my loud voice, I am speaking from the entirety of my diaphragm, is what it's called. It's around here. Um, and you can feel it if you squeeze with your just above the apps um i so the way you become deliberate of this is ideally breathe out and then breathe in as deep as you can feel your ribs kind of expand a bit and then breathe out completely feeling them retract again Again, ideally you should feel your spine stand straight and your posture change a bit. 
you want to be speaking from your chest this is especially important if you are doing singing um so in order to carry out notes for a long time so uh, that is me using my chest i am not a great singer but again it's an instrument that i want to use so that is why i practice singing um you want to do that so that you maximize your voice and also so your voice sounds better um, and carries more easily so ideally what i do uh, to take care of my lungs is i do yoga um and we're gonna do an exercise i'm going to get a chair and sit down and we're gonna do a little bit of yoga so remember the breathing i showed you where you take care to breathe with your as again not proper mic technique uh, take care to breathe with your chest so currently the way i'm sitting is that i'm having my back straight i ideally want the chair to be as flat as it can be and then i want my back to be entirely straight and then just slowly curl your back backwards take your belly button and get it as close to your spine as you can and then extend forward as far as you can while still keeping a not straight back what you want to bow it a little bit inwards and the way you want to do this is that you breathe in when you push forward and breathe out when you pull your uh, belly button backwards so ideally through your nose important note belly button forward breathe out while pulling the belly button towards your spine what's important there is to one to take care of your spinal spine if you especially if you sit down a lot that's a good exercise just to exercise the spine but also to remind you what it feels like to fill your chest entirely and empty it because you want to be doing that unconsciously um so that's essentially what i do for that um road warm-ups that's probably more if you are singing uh, I would just sing at a low energy level and then slowly work my way up. Um, I actually don't have a lot to say here because that is a ex place I am not entirely experienced. Uh, but I can say do not overwork your throat. Please take care of that. That is next point. Now, uh, we will have that a point here. your lungs by taking deliberate slow and deep breath ensuring that your um breathing and that your and deep breaths Ensure that you are speaking from the diaphragm. I think that's the correct pronunciation. Warm up your mouth. Now, this is... Yeah, there we go. That's many uh, vocal warm-ups. This is one I particularly am fond of. Because it, it feels very useful to me. So... You are going to feel silly doing this. Uh, I don't do it enough and I should actually do it way more uh, because I believe that there definitely are some very strong benefits to this and I should just do it more. So if you're watching along either on the VOD or right now, I would like you to do this with me. Count from one to 20 as fast as you can. Stop. So I'm a bit anxious, so I'm breathing quickly. So I'm just going to slow that down. And then I'm going to count to 20, ensuring that I announce everything as aggressively as I can. But also I want to count to 20 as fast as possible. So, that's going to be silly. That is the, that's how this business goes. So, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That felt awkward. Now, the way you do this, um, stick your tongue out of your mouth like this, and then we count one, one, two, one, three, and ensure that we enunciate everything very correctly and on point. And then we will count to 20 again to see if it helps. Ideally, if I instructed you correctly, it should work. Um, Please follow along and do this because <laughs> I wouldn't. It's awkward to do this alone, so I would like to believe that out there someone is saying one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now nah, that should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1. Deep breaths, Jacob. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Good, only five numbers left. <laughs> One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17. Done. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, last 20. Woo! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And now, you sucking all the spit and weird stuff coming out of your face. Uh, that's a workout for your face, but dang. Whew. Take a deep breath. And then we count to 20 as fast as we can and now creating as much as possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That was a lot more smooth and a lot better feeling for me. Please, if you doubt that, try it. I'm just gonna say, tongue out of mouth, counting to 20 exercise. You, you know what I'm talking about here. Now, this is a hard part to talk about. This is taking care of your voice and body. Um, some of this will be in using the instrument correctly, but a lot of this is essentially, please take care of yourself. This is, when I'm on commentary or streaming, I always have a big thing of water. Have water around. Take breaks. Um, 
throat medicines some people find that they work i don't i haven't tried enough but like tea helps me sometimes after when i need to calm down and like treat myself after to like prevent a vocal hangover um and uh, this is a big big uh, pro tip here don't smoke uh that's that's real apples huh i I wouldn't be surprised if apples worked. No, yeah. That actually kind of makes sense. I think. There are many things you can use to take care of your body in general. This is regular exercise. That is a hard thing to do. You don't need to go to the gym every other day. I don't. I can't. Do small things to take care of your body and yourself. That is important for your health. Get some fresh air. Ensure that you are drinking some water once in a while. Um, ensure that you aren't consistently stressed. Make sure that you are... Ideally, if you are doing like an 8-hour commentary shift, make sure there's some breaks in there where you can just shut up for 10 minutes and get some water. Ensure that you have that on hold and that you respect your body. Because if it starts hurting when you speak and such, that is your body saying, stop it. That is your body being like, hey, you need to take care of yourself. So please listen. You only have the one. You need to take care of it. And that's also mental health wise. Um, you can't fucking speak properly when you're crying. Um, I say this from experience. If you are having a rough mental time, take some time off streaming. Take some time off performing uh, with your voice. Um, there's no need to burn your candle at both ends, if possible, right? There are many ways to take care of yourself. Learn your own body, get to know it, figure out what helps it. Yoga helps a lot for me. Uh, martial arts helps as well. Uh, going to the gym is something I enjoy. Um, going for long walks, I love doing that at night, especially. Getting some cold air, that helps a lot. Um, because when you are stressed, you aren't working properly and this is a very kind of weird advice but take care of yourself I, I cannot i cannot exaggerate how important that is um i think that is the most important thing i can say in this lecture take care of yourself and listen to your body listen to your body Using the instrument correctly. Now, this is probably a bit controversial. Um, so I am going to make two things here. Projecting and mic technique. Good. So what is projecting? Projecting is the thing uh, I demonstrated earlier where I was like, this right here is hi um, uh, this is how Jacob speaks normally this is his kind of chill actual voice and this is my twitch streamer voice this is my comms voice this is holy shit we have grand finals going on tumbleweed is taking this to the effing limit there's a different power behind and that is in breathing so one there are things we should take care of yeah so Projecting is re actually what what is the like projecting your voice? What what's add some fucking that's even useless name. Okay. Uh, the incident's kind of shit to him. So, the way I got this um, is I kind of got this from vocal teachers and some martial arts things. So, in martial arts, a thing that's important is that when you are... If you want to punch something and you want to punch it hard, you want to hit it. But instead of thinking, I need to hit this thing, then you will go boop and not move through it. You want to think, I need to hit 10 centimeters or so behind so that you go and go through. It's kind of the same. 
I am not talking into my microphone. That is also a thing here. I am talking to the camera as if there was someone like a meter in front of me. Uh, but a bit exaggerated. I am speaking to a room right now. Um, if you were in the room with me, this would be a bit loud. Um, so, this is a bit of an overlap. So, what important part here. Breathe deliberately and deeply. Speak using your diaphragm. Uh, let's actually ensure that we are spelling that correctly. Fragging. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. No, oh, it's. I was like, why? Why is this a method of birth control? No, it's also a thing that sits here on your body, down here. So down beneath the lungs. Uh, good. <laughs> I just what the fuck. Jake. Jake got confused. So, speak using your diaphragm. And that's kind of the essential. This is again a thing that requires to speak a bit too loudly. Um, again, this is why actors speak loudly. This again, you kind of want to be a bit below yelling because this is yelling. You want to be just a bit below that. Uh, you don't want to go too hard. And one of the reasons you want to project your voice, we are going into mic technique. Have your face around, I don't know, what's that, like 20 centimeters from the microphone? So if I'm speaking with a normal noise, that's not really getting captured here. But if I'm projecting, it is getting captured properly. And that is why you want the microphone that far away. Uh, also because it just sounds better, especially if you are singing. You cannot sing properly. One, if you are sitting down. If you are singing, you need to stand down, up. Uh, for commentary, I prefer standing up, but I can do it sitting if necessary. Uh, but it gives my lungs more freedom, and that is why I prefer standing up. Um, and then, this is a key technique. Don't speak directly into the microphone so i'm going to show you a few examples so now i am speaking directly into the microphone t spit spittle plosive now i'm speaking a bit away t spit plosive ideally that should have sounded a bit worse when i was speaking directly into the microphone uh the reason for this is that physically, a microphone is a thing that's vibrating. If you speak directly into it, you affect it a lot more powerfully. And that is not always good, because then if you blow, for example, it will be a lot louder. So if we hear me blow right now... That's not much. If I speak directly into it and blow... Oh, we, we evaded some breath noises there, eh? So, because I am go usually on camera, uh, ideally, if, if I was recording, I would point it down from the top. But uh, because I'm on camera, what I do is I have the microphone placed at around my throat, and then it is pointing upwards toward me. Um, I have found that works good. So that is what I do. That's... <laughs> That's talking about the body. Let's have a bit of a uh, small break. I'm going to get a bit of water. And then we are going to move on to the microphone.
that's also a good idea. Stretching your body. Take care of it. It's healthy. Six. Oh, that was a good crack in the helps. Damn. <laughs> Whew. Okay, we're... I'm gonna sit down for this. Uh, I am lucky enough to have a standing desk. It is one of the greatest investments I have made in my life. Um, I cannot recommend it highly enough. We are just gonna adjust our camera angle and the microphone position a bit. So... Oh, that was a desk and an elbow. Uh, okay, chill, be polite. Good. So I'm also ensuring that I'm trying to sitting with good posture right now so that I am not effing up my back more than necessary. So... I'm gonna hit you with some cold hard reality. Um... Reality hits here. Doing good audio is expensive. Uh, like, let's just do a quick thing here. This microphone here, that cost me 900 Danish crowns. That's, let's say, 120 euros. Um... Let's ignore the mic stand, cable, whatever, that's extra money. Um, over here I have what is called a sound card. Uh, that's a Focusrite 2i2 uh, that has two microphone inputs and two uh, speaker outputs. Uh, that's monitoring, phantom power, it can have... Um... This is hard to do with one hand. Uh, this has this like funny sticks that I can put a jack stick in as well, so I don't just do microphones. Um, we're laying you down a bit. Uh, then I have monitoring. I am using a speaker. I am using a single speaker for a mono setup uh, because that speaker cost, I think. Uh, oh well. Okay, sound card there that cost two Danish two K Danish crowns and that's like let's say two fifty uh, euros. So we're up to three three hundred and seventy euros. Speaker that's one and a half hundred or headphones. Actually I'm we're gonna look this up. Um Uh, in Europe, I recommend the site Toman. Uh, it has good audio equipment. Uh, studio. Uh, what is a studio moniker cost? What headphones cost? Uh, we want active near field monitor. Okay, now can can I get it and give it to me in? Um, well, I'm in Denmark, but uh, I would like it in English and I would like the currency to be euros. Safe. Sweet. So like a hundred euros. Oh, that's a set for... Is this actually a set? No, 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 I was a bit, I was just like, no, 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 that's not a. So the reason it chose two is that ideally you want two so you can monitor stereo audio. Uh, this is, yeah, a hundred euros for one speaker. Uh, I definitely recommend getting speakers for monitoring. It's the best sounding option and the most accurate, but... That's a uh, 
not a great uh, way of doing it. So we need some studio headphones. Uh, the reason we want studio headphones is that they have a linear feedback response so they don't corrupt, uh, and same with speakers, so that they don't corrupt the audio you are hearing. Um, normal headphones that you get, or like the speakers in your car, have, uh, you know, an EQ, right? You know, the three knobs that has like low, mids, and highs. They are not accurate. They are, usually the bass is boosted, the mids is turned down a bit, and the high is often a bit up, but then a bit down. Um, you ideally want it flat if you're making music or making audio that you want to know how it sounds, right? This is why, like, if you're doing illustration on the uh, computer, you want a screen that has a, like, a specific uh, color representation so you know how it will look somewhere else. A lot of musicians actually, like, burn their music and then go out in the car and play it so that they can hear how it sounds on car speakers. Um... And again, a good set of uh, studio headphones that's a hundred and... I am going to be suspicious of this. Um... Don't play the stereo jack, that always like... Okay. Are they, they are semi-open, which is not optimal. You want open your headphones. Uh, for more most accurate uh, noise reproduction. So let's say from mic, focus right, like uh, speaker, and then we're going with the 60 euro headphones. That is 430 euro for my setup. This is kind of the bare, mi bare minimum that I would find acceptable. Uh, um, so, that's the like, ideally I wish you could all get this. Get. Studio headphones, a SM58 mic, uh, right, that's actually, what What does this mic cost? Uh, it's a vocal microphone, uh, this is a dynamic microphone, uh, that is foreseen, that's 100 euros straight on, yep, that's, uh, I paid a lot less for it because of a sneaky trick I will teach you later. Studio, uh, if we want an audio interface. Uh, you can't get the audio interface I use anymore, I think. Uh, I d it was out of production because uh, the company made a better one. Um, miscellaneous studio gear. Did you look at audio interfaces? There we go. Well, of course, it's the first one. It's the most important one. USB audio interfaces. Uh, this is the one I got, except uh, I got the first gen. Um, they made it cheaper. Oh, okay, okay. No, 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 okay. It's only 150 euros. That's 100 euros. So that's 250. Uh, 250. Then the... Head no, okay, 300 euros. 300 euros. 300 euros. That, that's like the bare minimum. I, I would recommend. Um... Yeah, uh, the Scarlett uh, Focusrite does very good stuff. Uh, I can recommend them uh, highly. Uh, I am a big fan. Uh, you can get the Solo if you want to cheap out on some money. Um, uh, I didn't get the Solo because I wanted to do... Uh, I got this because I wanted to record guitars and instruments. And this is the way you do this. Um... I really want one of those. Um, and like, it sucks, but this is what I I will recommend. This is, if you are serious, this is the route you have to go. Uh, ideally, if you want to go hard uh, and you want a microphone recommendation from me, uh, we are going to go into... I'm actually going to open this as well. Uh, large diaphragm microphones. Sure, SM7B. 
This is state of the art uh, for podcasts. Uh, this is even an amazing vocal microphone. It costs 360 euros. I want one of these, but by fucking God, are they expensive. They are very, very good. This, with this, you can do about whatever you want, but you need to know how to use it. You need to know what this shit means. Um, and it's a very good microphone. It's a very, very good microphone, but that's not where you're coming in. So I'm, I'm going to give you two routes. Um, so two routes here. Just starting out. I and then I want to improve. So the reason we're using the side is that I trust them and they are very good for European stuff. Um there are other places. Uh USB podcast microphones. Uh yeah, there's a version of this Sure 7 that has a uh, USB thing, right? Yeah. And you can do this. Um, the reason why we want a separate audio interface is because what if the microphone breaks? What if the audio interface breaks? Then you need to replace both sets. Um, and ideally, you lose control and quality. Um, honestly, this set is probably fine. T-Bone makes kind of shitty stuff. 60 euros. This should go straight into... You get a pop filter. You get a stand. Straight into... Headphone output direct monitoring. That's actually good. Um, yeah, Something like this. And just stick it in. If you want to record audio. That's fine. This is 60 euros. Um, good USB microphone. Use a shitty headset. That's it. Use whatever headset you have available. Fine. If you want to improve, that's another path. So, this is the... You're starting out. Gonna be like here, sixty euro. I want to improve. This is assuming you have a USB microphone and you want to go. So you need this is the recommendation I'm gonna give. Sure SM sev thirty-eight. Right, that is the microphone. This is the Microphone. This is a 58, 58. Sure, some 58. Um, this is the one I use. I have two of them. They are good for both instruments and uh, vocals. They these microphones can take a fucking beating. Um, I have dropped them on the floor uh, and they are fine. They are built for stage performance. Uh, if you see a concert. I can almost guarantee it's almost certainly one of those mics they are using. The, uh, they are very good. So get one of those. That's 100 euro. Audio interface. Um... That that can vary wildly, um, but you need an audio interface so the microphone can go in. Uh, as well, you need studio headset. Don't get a fucking gaming headset. They um, gaming headsets are overpriced. No, um, not accurate. Reproduction and fragile. 
don't fucking do that. Get a studio headset. Um, then you also need XLR cable. Wind it properly. Uh, you need to take care of audio cables. You can look that up. Um, and that's a good start. With that, you have all you need to do pretty good audio. Um, and again, I'm saying that because audio is complicated. There's a lot to this. Um, there is like a whole fucking ton of work you can do here. Uh, we need water. So, what do you... What do you gain with this? Um, it's gained by spending more money. Control. Um, control and higher signal quality. Uh, what you get is that you get the raw thing. Uh, you get the audio into the thing, and then I can change it. I can change the gain with my box, um, and from my box I can do stuff. Usually when you have the microphones, you can't do a lot about it. Um, and it's rough. So I had some questions from that I posted on the Discord, and one of them, can you recommend brands and microphones and what to look for in purchasing one? Sure. Sure is good. Sure is very good. Focusrite makes good audio interfaces. Headsets. Um, I can recommend Samsung. Uh, S-A-M-S-O-N. Mine is decent. Um, just get musicians gear. Get studio gear. Don't get consumer stuff. Because that is... That is aimed at consumption, not creation. So it will be tuned to sound better to you, but it won't actually like sound better. Um, it's like, again, if you bought a camera that shows you the pictures with a filter, but if you send it to someone else, the filter won't be on there, right? It's kind of that thing. Or rather, even worse, you take the picture with the filter on it, and you're like, that looks good. You send it to your friend, and they look at it on their phone, and now it has the filter on it twice, and you're like, why does they have two cat ears, right? Well, four cat ears. Um, so, that is the reason why. That and it is way more sturdy. Um, now, this is the pro tip. How to... Do this on the cheap. Buy used gear. Buy used microphones. Um, we're going to go to the Danish thing. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's, that's an old uh, <laughs> parameter I was looking at. Uh, don't mind me. It's really cool. I like weird uh, things. Uh, SM58. This vocal has kind of gone to shit. So there's also stores up here. That's a fucking chair! Here we go. SM58. 400 Danish crowns. Uh, that's like 50 euro. Uh, what did it actually cost? 100 euro. Can you? Do they have that? Oh my, Jesus. DBA can suck my dick. But yeah, there's one for 500 Danish crowns. Again, 400, 600, 700. Uh, this, one of the reasons I recommend the SM58 is that it is fucking sturdy. So it can take beatings and that is why I could recommend buying it used. Uh, SM58 car test. Hey guys, fun segment where we're going to take it over with my car. Um, I've invited my friends, Vince and Christine from the 
That's enough. You ready, Christine? Okay. So, uh, that's a car. Reverse, yep. Keep going. Quicker. Quicker. Yep, quicker. Quicker, Look what you did, Christine. You destroyed it. It's like a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, you are getting all your dame. You belong to. So I'm just gonna give this a listen to ensure that it works. Right? With uh, vocals and guitar. Somebody so before. Knew. And then we get the after. Look what you did, Christine. You destroyed it. It's like a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> you belong to. That still me. fucking works! Although we're apart, these effing microphones are. It's a joke in studios that you don't need a hammer because you just have the SM58s. Um, like, they are solid. Um, but yeah, buy used gear. Um, this is my electric bass. These are kind of expensive. I got it for 100 euros because I bought it used. Buying used stuff is a bit risky, requires you to interact with people. But if you want to save money on audio gear, you can buy it used if you know what you're looking for. And generally, I think that is a great thing. What's really handy about buying stuff used is that you can buy it, test it. If it doesn't work out or you stop, you can sell it again. Um, again, only that requires energy and I respect it if you can't do it. But I saved a lot of money and got a lot of my stuff on a student's budget uh, because I bought stuff used and haggled. Um, and I cannot recommend it enough. Please do that. Now... Uh, I deliberately, I got asked um, about brands microphones. I also got asked headsets with attached microphones and what settings one should look out for. Um, I'm not going to put the person who asked that on blast, but I will n recommend you never, never use a headset microphone. I, I'm going to genuinely try and find one on here uh headphone microphone combinations uh okay so i think if you want to do it good i think this one seems so sketch for me this one seems very very sketch okay it's closed back so it's not good audio um so there's a bad headset to start with. Uh, let's have a listen to the microphone. They should have a... That's one of the benefits of uh, musicians, like sites like this, is that they usually have a recording of the thing. They don't, because it sucks. Okay, good. Um, have a look at this thing. There should be a recording for this. Yeah. Using a Snowball Yeti, like using a USB microphone is way better than using a headphone microphone. Jeez, I can't get recordings from these? I feel like that says a lot, uh, because if you go here, we say microphones, we find the SM58 once again. I am sucking this microphone stick. Um, in the morning when I rise That's the microphone I use Just like a song in my heart You will always It's fine You can't get them If you want to do headset stuff I would recommend you look very closely at Studio Gear um, And I have a suspicion the best th the thing these are really for are people who are sitting in the studio 
uh, and monitoring musicians and who need a microphone to speak into so the musicians in another room can hear them. I These should not be used for getting good audio. Um, and like, even let's say you are getting, uh, let's price low to high. Oh, so it is disgusting to me. Uh, base stock bearing are... Uh, Bearing or makes very cheap like music gear. Yeah, don't. Um, like, let's get up to like an okay price range where I wouldn't be like uncomfortable. I think yeah, here is like the cheapest I would go on this, but I would still expect to be disappointed with this, especially because I cannot find a recording of it. Um, uh, second generation, okay. Buyer Dynamic is known around the world for professional studio headphones. What happens when a company that's legendary in studio audio makes a gaming headset? Biodynamic claims it's... Okay, so it doesn't have a flat frequency response. That's always like a nut. But again, this is 200 euros. You can get a good microphone and an audio interface for that. Do that instead. I cannot... I think that is a mismanagement of your money if you use a headset microphone. Um, I think that is like just actually stupid. Uh... And, like, I don't judge you. You do you. But please don't. I think that is... I think that category is... I am broke, but want to stream. I do have a gaming headset, though. Then I'll be like, just download OBS and press start, bro. Like, that that's where we are here. Uh, and again, if this is where you are, that is fine. I totally respect that. Uh, that is completely okay. I just need you to know that that is not an optimal setup. And you won't be able to use... It will hold you back. But you can still take this first part and use it. And you can still take this third part and use it. Um, good. Now, signal processing. What do we do with the sound? Uh, what I do, my signal processing... Uh, I use voice meter. Um, this is not great. This is not a great solution. I am actually frustrated with this program many a times. I want to fucking add a fucking VST in here, but there's no support for that. But I can get a separate host and then use these things for it. But that's just fucking... I have problems with this program. But it allows you to do some things. Set a gate. Right now you cannot hear my uh, me. Well, now you can. But if I shut up, it took a while for you to hear me clacking. Um, but if I turn this off entirely, that's me clacking on my keyboard. Uh, but I have it at two point six. That works out for me. Uh, then I can still. You will hear me when I speak and type at the same time, but if I just type, you won't be able to hear it nearly as much, so it won't be nearly as annoying. Uh, that also helps when I'm in Discord calls or in commentary. I also use a slight bit of compression. I haven't tuned this entirely, but 1.1 seems to be good. Um, compression essentially takes the loud part of your voice uh, and says, Jacob, 
maybe tone it down a bit and it takes the lower parts and tunes them up. Uh, now, if you do that and not have a gate, then that's not... Uh, that, yeah, you need the gate to do that. But And then I have limiters on, so I won't go above zero, so I won't um, push speakers too loud. And then I put some uh, artificial gain over here. Uh, I like quadruple the volume uh, when I send it uh, to people so that ideally my microphone is too loud and then they turn me down because it's a lot easier to turn audio down than it is to amplify it because then we need a whole amplifier circuit thing and that is going back to how audio works electronically because if you want to turn it down you just up the resistance of the circuit. But if you want to turn it up, then you need to do a whole new circuit that has amplifiers and stuff, and that introduces loss of the signal or distortion of the signal, as it's called. Um, I use voice meter. I have a compressor at 1.1 and a gate at 2.6. Works good for me. I recommend you do the same. Uh, that's kind of this easy. I recommend you do the same and then you tune that into whatever sounds good for you. Uh, there's a lot other stuff you can do with this that is more complicated, but um, in order to do that, we probably have to go into software processing a lot more. Now, what I have done is that um, I have my microphone at a point where if I speak loudly, it won't peak, but I can sometimes see my little feedback thing go into the red if I speak very loudly. So I need to really push the microphone, but I also want the gain to be up so that I am audible. But I don't want to peak it out entirely, so I have room to announce and then I limit that space with the compressor. Um, so... Again, this is a thing you really need to work with, and this is a thing that is very complicated, and this is why I am going to be sitting in a, like, this is why I'm going to be in an audio channel on my Discord and talking and helping people um, for the next couple of hours. Um... This is not easy. Uh, this You can do a lot of work with this, so... Things you can do uh, to get out. Um, let's just... Uh, things you can do. One. Noise gate. It turns off the... Microphone when you aren't speaking or making noise above a threshold. This will, for example, prevent uh, the noise of someone opening the door behind you or something like that. Um, it's called a noise gate because usually the way you do it uh, is that you, if you have background hum uh, that it always produces, you want it above that so the hum doesn't get through you can still hear the hum when you speak and then that is where we do stuff like eq uh to shape the voice this is uh, or remove annoying noises um so i get my microphone out here there's an eq and voice meter i don't do a lot with it uh because I don't see, I wanna, um, I just haven't gotten around to it and that's the thing I'm going to do. But let's say for example, a common problem in Europe is 60 hertz hum, because that is the uh, frequency our mains electronics run with and many audio things have that problem. So if your microphone has that, you can go in here and say, uh, let's turn everything off. Um, Except for this one, and then we move this to... Oh my, can't I fucking write? Oh, see, this is why I'm not excited for this. Let's... Well, we need exactly 60 hertz, Jesus Christ. Because we want to 
hit the frequency. We want this type of filter. Uh, you will be able to hear this on my voice right now, actually. Um, I should actually do a thing so I'm also able to hear it. I will be speed jamming myself, but that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make right now. Oh, it'll be on there. Oh, I won't even be able to hear it myself. Damn. Uh, yeah, there's no way for me to do that right now. Uh, without speech jamming myself completely. So, you can like put this on and find the right Jesus Christ voice meter. Usually in these tools you can just fucking add the thing and drag it to... Like, it just... Okay, fuck. And then here we want to... Okay, that doesn't matter because it's deliberately a thing. And then you can use this to tune the thinness of it. Oh, thank you for the follow UI Lazarus. That's nice. Um, and then you can use this to like increase and widen. Ideally, you want this to be so as thin as possible. So you only just hit where the noise is. But you can you have to like get this thin and then you slowly widen until you hear it disappear. Um I can I can get this out right. Um should be a way for me to listen to this. Oh my god. Um Well, essentially what I would actually do if I was doing this is that I would record this and then do a sweep of this very slowly and find out where is it gone. Uh, but that's not necessary for me. Um you can do a lot of stuff with filters. Uh for example, I am so annoyed that it's not um that I don't even like get the frequency response here of me talking. Um, that's, uh, see, again, I have problems with voice meter. It is good, but there is some issues. Wait, no. Should I see it now? Okay, do you hear this? Is there a weird change in my voice right now? Or is there now? This should sound weird. Hmm. Second one, so this needs to be blue for it to work. Ideally, you should barely be able to hear me, and then it's slowly opening up. Yeah. So blue. To See again. I don't know entirely how this tool works. Um. But yeah. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Um. Ideally, uh, what I would do, uh, if I were you, uh, and what I'm going to do in a bit, is do something like this. Oh my god. Can I get a... Oh my god, it's solid Q uh, here, and set it around like 50, so that especially bass notes, there aren't too many of those. Uh, again, this is a preference thing, and you should look stuff up. Uh, Audio stuff is incredibly complicated, um, and I will be hanging out and helping people with this after this. Um, usually you shouldn't do too much. Um, like, I wouldn't do too much. What you can do, though, actually, is um, sure SM58 filter settings oh also thing get a pop filter it reduces plosives in your noise uh, which is essentially uh, quick blows of wind um oh my god eq settings then it eq is a type of filter this is again audio stuff is complicated um Okay, can I? Okay. Ooh, this may be something. Mic placement setup tweaks. Okay, okay. EQ. Aha! So this is how they do it. 
this is a smart person who has done something, copy what they do, listen to it, does it sound good, keep it, not yeet it. Um, audio is a lot about listening to stuff, if it sounds good, then it's good, if not, it's not good. That is why I recommend getting studio headsets, a studio headset, so heavily. Um, I'm gonna put this note here. Um, also, signal processing is where you can spend the most time for the least gain. You can do a lot of work, but start working on signal processing if you have a goal and a problem. My mic is working on weird noise that I want to remove. Go in and do it. I had the problem of not having a compressor on it, so I got a simple compressor on it that works. Keep it simple, stupid, okay? You can spend so much time tweaking EQ settings that don't matter, okay? It sucks, but you can spend a lot of time doing that and not gain anything. This is probably the deepest subject and the subject that I can tell you least about. Um, because it all depends on your situation uh, and what you want it to sound like. Um, if you're doing vocal stuff, however, I can say a lot more interesting stuff. Um, for example, if you are singing over instruments, ideally, you want to find the frequency range of the voice and then try and remove as much noise outside of that. You want to, like, kind of find the essential parts of the signal and toss everything else. And then you want to take the frequency range of that essential part in the backing track and stuff, and then turn that down slightly so that the vocals pop. Like, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. But if you are, as I am going to assume, a fighting game commentator or something, two things you need to keep in mind. Get a compressor on your stuff. Get a noise gate. No three things and make it loud make the noise going into your discord loud we're gonna have a look at my discord audio settings streamer mode uh voice and video i have my inputs from voice meter don't press this fucking button it will ruin your life do this automatically uh it doesn't really matter to me because i already have a noise gate so i just have it around here um, put the volume at 200%, then the other side can turn it down. It is a lot easier to turn down audio than it is to turn it up. So send loud audio, that will make the job easier for the TO. Um, unless you have a lot of noise you don't know how to deal with, keep this off. Um, Echo cancellation, probably fine. Noise reduction, eh. Automatic gain control. If your setup is functioning, you don't need this. Um, this is mostly preferences. Yeah, okay. Like, the most important part is send loud audio for the love of God. Send loud audio. Um, so. I think... And that is actually it for the lecture in itself. But that is not it for my work now. Um, I will take this and upload it to a paste bin or something. It'll be in the YouTube description. Uh, I will also take this and upload it to my Discord. If you want to come talk audio. So, uh, Ethnia, so... You need to understand how audio works here. Um, yes, the audio can be too um, high, but the way Discord amplifies the audio... Um, my thing here, if I turn my audio interface up too loud, it will start clipping. But the software... Uh, amplifier I have here 
will not start clipping. This is going to be loud. I'm going to warn you. It is now turned up way loud, but it's not clipping, if I understand correctly, because this is a transparent way of improving the gain. Um, it should be done now. The same is true with the Discord. Have the thing at 200%. Because um, again, it is digital amplification. It is not going to clip unless Discord does a big oopsie. Um, and ideally, I've been in the situation many times where I've like gotten a, hey, uh, can you turn your volume up? We need you higher. Uh, I have never gotten hit up because they want me to be more quiet. Because then the homie is just going to turn me down. It is so easy to make things more quiet. It's very hard to make them uh, louder. Uh, especially, especially if the production side are sitting with a Discord call and they are, have me at 200%. Then they can then they need to like turn up the audio in OBS and turn down my co-host and then it starts getting awkward. So that is the best tip I can give for commentators. Um so yeah, that's where we are. So I am going to be in this Discord, uh hanging out. Get in there if you want to have help. If you are a commentator, if you are a musician, whatever. Uh, I'm going to be spending the next two, let's see, it's half to four CET, uh, until 5 p.m. CET, I'm going to dedicate my time. Uh, I'm probably going to be sitting around longer. If not, then send me a DM on Discord. Um, please do, because I would like to help people. This is a thing I did because I wanted to help people with their audio issues. And I like it. And I will be slow and gentle with you and we will talk this out. Because the thing is, this is a wide subject. Um, and there are some general rules like treating your voice and body correctly. But the software and hardware side is very personalized. I can give you recommendations, but the software is really where it comes to making the best out of your situation. Um, and... There's a lot of stuff you can do there. Uh, there's a lot of problems you can fix. Uh, but there's no need to... Uh, actually, I forgot a thing down here. Um, compressor. Uh, make quiet parts louder and loud parts quieter this is a good thing trust me uh and then also the as uh, remove remove plosives um you don't need all of these this is if you have problems you can work on them um Another thing, a limiter, prevent clipping, um, like there's a lot of stuff you can do, you don't need to do all of it, but I recommend doing a lot of it. So that has been it here from Dejection Streaming Emporium. This is the lecture that is going up on my YouTube, uh, and please if you have any questions, find me on Twitter, write me, uh, find me on Discord, whatever. Um, or Google. Google is a big help. Get multiple sources though. Don't take advice from just one source. Um, again, especially with audio equipment, that it's fine. It's like, oh, this homie on the forum recommends me this mic. Oh no, it sucks. Just sell it. But when it comes to your body and taking care of your voice, get good sources, please. Now, thank you. Take care. I will be in a audio channel called Audio Talk on my Discord and be helping out people for the next at least one and a half hour. Thank you and take care. Goodbye. I love you. Oh, like and subscribe. <laughs>